but right now we're going to go over to our man Basil Chapman. Now Basil Chapman comes on every Tuesday and uh, we take a look at his newsletter that he has. It's the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. We had some people sign up for this uh, post subscriber webinar just to get access to it and they have loved it so far. Strongly recommend checking this out. Again, you get this newsletter. This is released every day and then he has a long form, usually on Friday, uh, kind of wrapping up the market uh, for the week, seeing what's going on uh, the next week. It is fantastic. It's such an absurd added value. Um, but right now, if you've never tried this out before, I really recommend doing it. Um, you get a 30 day money back guarantee for whatever reason. It doesn't work out for you, but we're betting that it will. And you get access to this fantastic webinar he had November 14th. Basil Chapman, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Jacob. I much appreciate it. No, absolutely. What are we so uh, taking a look at just, today? Just, yeah. Just as we as we speaking. Yeah. The Dow yesterday made an all-time high of forty-four thousand eight hundred sixteen point six seven. It had a pretty sharp pullback this morning. It was down over two hundred and fifty points. And right now, we are within uh, an eye blink away of uh, extending yesterday's gain. I mean, this is a remarkable <laughs> really market. Is. Yeah. So I, I thought what I'd do at this point is just uh, to show in concept, basically what I, I've done over the decades, I developed a technique where I try to identify the lowest low bar and then merely count each successively higher peak and alphabetize them sequentially on the way up. And uh, so this chart that I'm showing here, this is the starting point, the low, and then you count each peak. And if uh, a peak is obviously where the following bar has a slightly lower high than the day before or the bar before, then it becomes a peak, just like a mountain. And what happens is if the pullback doesn't take out the original starting point, mm -hmm. but takes out the upside, left side, the, the left high, you start leg B, it becomes a floating letter until it becomes a peak. So that's the concept. And the concept is that the prices should go, if it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, the implication is there should be at least four higher peaks. That's peak A is first, peak B second, peak C is the third, peak D is the fourth, and it can even go to E, F, and G because at D, the obligation is to get you from a starting point to at least four higher peaks and go higher. That's where the yellow light goes on and you have to do some assessment. Right. So let me show you something very interesting. So we've been along the Dow, uh, oh, since uh, 2020, and then again, added to a position in 2022. We still got that, and we have it as a trading position. But most importantly, look at this. Um, the last high was on the, I believe it was the 16th of October at 43,325. They went to a peak D and then just a bar or two later, it snuck to a slightly higher high. That was an E and then it made an arch formation. This is a daily chart on the left. And look what happened. It pulls back to 41,647 on the 4th of uh, November. And then you get uh, a big gap. And this gap hasn't been filled, and it might not be full for a little while. And what's happened is we've gone to a peak A, pulled back, made a cup formation, and then broke out yesterday to a higher high, all-time high. And as we're speaking, we've made a leg B that's extending. So in the concept, what do I look for? I look for a confirmation of a buy signal that goes to a buy mode. That means I'm looking at the MACD, the moving average convergence strong, the relative strength, this little gray line strong, the nine period nicely over the 14 period, preferably having not even broken below the uh, 14 period uh, moving average on the previous pullback, which it didn't. Um, the stochastic over 80%, it's at 87%. On balance volume, not yet overbought, but rallying. And the, all those ingredients are there. So my the way I'm looking at this is that there should be higher highs to come, and we should get at least four higher peaks. When we get to the peak T, that's when we do an analysis. Can it continue? Sure. Weekly charts are very strong. Monthly chart is really strong. So, so far, the bull phase is still in place. I don't have, we can't, if tomorrow is a lower high, that becomes a peak B. And if on Friday there's a higher high, that becomes a leg C. If on Monday there's a pullback, that becomes a peak C. And if on Tuesday there's a higher high, when we when we meet again, that would be leg D. So 
it's next week. That's probably the very soonest, if everything falls into place, that you can get some kind of a top. That's just the Dow. So uh, for subscribers, for months, we've been talking about yeah. the rotation from the S&P 500 into the small caps, the IWM, to the Russell 2000. Mm. So here's the Russell 2000, and we added to the position just the other day. And the Russell right now is having a, a little bit of a rest for the day yeah. <laughs> because it's been on a tear. It's been actually turned into a leader. Now, remember I was looking at those peak Ds? Well, this is another, it's a fascinating thing. Look, here's the monthly chart. Back in November of 2021, the Russell made an all-time high of 244.46. It tumbles down to 161. What's the high yesterday? 244.98, with less than a dollar away <laughs> in three years after tumbling and coming back. Isn't, I, I love that. Isn't it amazing? It really, it really is. Basil, please stay right there. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you have in store for us. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Basil Chapman after this break. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching The Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined right now by Basil Chapman. He's the author of the Opening Call newsletter. He just had a subscriber webinar November 14th, so now is a perfect time to check out that newsletter and you get access to all uh, subscriber webinars uh, prior to that as well. Basil, we were talking a little bit about the Russell before we went to the break. Uh, curious to see what else you have in store for us. So what I was talking about was the relationship that I noticed some time ago where you had a leading sector and then a fading sector that should be moving together but didn't and then that fading sector starts to come come on strong we've seen that in stocks we've seen that in a lot of areas and that was a relationship of the xlf the sorry the iwm mm -hmm. and the s p the the the, the boss the 500 and now the the catch-up on the 2000 shares that have been lagging for ages and they've just made this potential double top and yet all the technicals are so strong so i'll leave that part there and then i'll say the another relationship and a reason why we actually went into bank of america a long time ago is because the s p uh, select financial spider fund the xlf which isn't really a purely bank money center bank because they have uh, they have berkshire hathaway but I think of it in terms of the, it's called the Select Financial Spider Fund, it's the biggie. So that had been doing very well. What was lagging and what did I think was so important that needed to come on strong uh, was the KRE, which is the S&P Regional Banking ETF. Sure. And that, you know, it's really important for the regional banks to be doing well if the economy, general economy, is going to be doing well because, I mean, that's that, that kind of funding is really important for <laughs> right. towns and cities and, you know, that's just, that's important. So, um, we, we've been along the KRE, the regional bank uh, sector as well. Well, uh, Bank of America was kind of the proxy for the XLF and we got along the KRE because uh, it just lags so much, and now it's done fantastic. And we even added to uh, add. We have two positions in this, and it's doing very nicely. And look, there's the uh, the previous high was back in January of 2022 at 78.81 peak D. That fourth highest peak plummets down to 34.12. Gets more than cut in half. Wow. May of 2023 starts so a big move up. Peak A, peak B, peak C, and here we are in leg D, and has broken the midpoint. So this is really important because it's acting really well up until this point. And yesterday it went to leg D, and now it's pulling back. So the technicals are still very strong. I'd like to see it uh, gone a little bit more uh, upside action. Uh, but at this particular point, it's achieved what we wanted, and from here on, it's, it's kind of a bonus if it can continue. So that same relationship where I was looking at one thing and it, it met the criteria to be able to swing to a lagging sector was the same thing that we were looking at. For instance, we've been long since uh, the, the day after the law of 2020 for the IAI, IAI, this is the iShares Broker Dealer e and Security ETF. But for subscribers who had missed that, we've, we've been in and out of different positions, Schwab, etc. But on this, the big pullback that we saw coming, uh, going into the, uh, let me just put this right here, going into the low that we saw back in August, we wanted to get Robinhood. And the reason was because the Robinhood players 
tend to go to the gold sector and then they come to the uh, Bitcoin. Uh -huh. And so we were very fortunate. We got Robin Hood <coughs> right there on the low in August. Whoops, let me just scroll across right there. Robin Hood. The low was at 13.98 on August the 5th. Nice. The, day, the next day we got long. So we, we've had this position and we've taken a little bit off and we, 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 we will add, to tra add as a trading position. But it's only in leg C in the weekly chart. So the relationship there was with the Bitcoin. So we also went along uh, the Bitcoin. Now, let me show you something very interesting. I'm going to go to Bitcoin, the Bitcoin uh, fund. This is the Bitcoin Investment Trust. So the pattern I've been talking about for a long time, and it's got this cup, and I call this the cup and ladle breakout pattern when it goes right through the left side. Uh, in a leg C because it very, invariably still goes to a D. Well, lo and behold, the monthly charts in leg D, the weekly charts in leg D, and the daily chart is at a peak E. So I'm saying together with, I'll go back to Robin Hood, see how they're going together. Look, Robin Hood just made a little bit of a top yesterday yep. at a D, and the Bitcoin is pulling back. So I'm saying this is just a moment to be a little careful there, but the technicals still are still remaining very strong. And um, it's just fascinating that areas that were lagging, and if you look at Bitcoin, there was a period earlier in the year where it pulled back. Look, that July pullback way down there in the 50, this is the 50,000 area to, in Bitcoin, and look where it is now. So there's another thing that I've spoken about for years, or the 100 levels or the millennium levels, the 1,000s. So what did Bitcoin do the other day? It went to 100,170. It's now at 91,235. Yep. And that's telling me that this millennium level could become a little bit of a, 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 a resistance cool. area. But if you start to trade for about a week above 100,000, this is above 100,000 and 300, so 100.3. I think that's going to be the that's what you need to see for Bitcoin to go even higher. But right now, I think it, it's got a well deserved breather. And um, we've taken a little bit of profits from our IBIT. And this is another thing that is fascinating. If you look at this chart on the right, look at this beautiful cup and handle pattern. Not one of my favorite patterns unless you're able to get the handle just perfectly right if you haven't been in. Well, look at this IBIT. This is the actual part of the handle right here because it only became an IPO. iShares Bitcoin Trust ETF only came out this year. So it's only you can only see the handle, but you've got to know the core position is the Bitcoin. Now look how nicely it's gone to a leg D. And this is what I call a cup and ladle, chum wave cup and ladle breakout pattern to D. And it soars through C on the left side and goes much higher. So uh, these are the things I just thought I'd put together in terms of giving you the uh, the background, the technical background for why we went into these positions and how they've panned out at this particular point. Yeah, Basil, that, that was fantastic. And I'll say with Bitcoin too, and a lot of the, the cryptos, they tend to have this kind of psychology around them. Like Bitcoin has always wanted to go to 100,000, right? This has always been in the, I would say, kind of the cultural narrative behind it. And when you get close to that, right? I mean, this is a price target for people. And this is, again, more psychological than anything. But it does, it, it works, right? And, and you it can see that. It becomes a focal point, right. Precisely. It's the same way I look at like Dogecoin, right? It's at 40 something cents right now. When that hits one, I believe it will, it takes a breather and it comes back down. And then you get, you know, you build momentum for the next push. So uh, Basil, that, that was fantastic. Uh, really, so I, yeah. I should just mention that we were in, in the 12s, in the GBTC, that's the Bitcoin, um, uh, the, the, the fund that I showed you. Yes. Way back. And we rode it all the way to about 50 or something. And that's yes, the chart based on Bitcoin. And where did it go to? It went to a peak D. And I remember it was uh, in November, December. And December it started to come down. And I went to a New Year's party, uh, next door neighbor. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and everybody there was talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. And these were adults and young people, everyone. everyone. Yeah. I yeah. said, uh-oh. And I said, I've got a peak D in my monthly chart of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, be careful and look at that pullback. It went all the way down to the Bitcoin went down to 20,000. I think of it the same way when I started hearing everybody talk about it. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., all right? 
Thank you very much, Jacob. Have a, have a great Thanksgiving. You too. Folks, get opening call newsletter now. There's so much more where that came from. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.